Right, Kanzi here, bringing you episode 13 of Kenshi Age of Blood and Sand. As you can see, Lydus has his now group of hivers in front of him, and this is everyone we have. What the plan is for this episode is we are going to find a new place to start a base. So, there are a couple areas on the map I'm interested in. I would like a more central location, because I need to get to basically every part of the map uh, in this playthrough that we're doing. So having a nice central location is going to be the best for us. I do like uh, the area there in uh, the border zone. That's a nice flat area and it's raised. Skinner's Roam also has some potential. There's uh, not too many uh, enemies there, but there's plenty of animals, access to resources. Uh, Fertility is not too good, nor is water. But those are things that we can deal with, which uh, won't be an issue. Uh, we can get to it. So, we're only going to send Lydus. Ooh, ooh, this is one of the Mecha Leviathans I was talking about earlier in the series. They are insane. Uh, they can one hit most uh, most NPCs <laughs> and most of your characters as well. And yeah, no, um, <laughs> probably should get away from that. That's, uh, that's uh, not a fight I'm going to win, but I will give it the slip. Sweet, but look at that model, that is wicked. I mean, as long as it doesn't get the glisten from the fog on it, it is such a nice model. Also, we're just going to finish off these uh, skeleton spiders right here, just so I can get a couple iron plates. The reason for that is if I find a place that I want, I can chuck down a stone mill or maybe a iron mill if I'm feeling particularly fancy. This way, we then have an area where we can start producing resources for it. And also, we're just going to fight the skimmers because they drop some nice robotic parts that we're going to be able to sell for a fair bit, which we are going to need. We're going to need a lot more money than the money we have right now. For the reason, we have the mod of the Adventurer's Guild. But what it means is you can talk to these certain NPCs, and what they do is they'll then bring a trade caravan with recruits towards your base, which is super helpful to get your base going, considering... Uh, Hivers are fairly rare within the game, and then soldier drones even more so. It just means there's a way for you to get recruits fairly quickly, and they bring them to you. They don't start with any decent equipment, and they don't start with any stats. So they are just bog standard characters, which is quite fitting for the hive, because most of the hives aren't going to have characters themselves. They are going to have a name, and their name is their job. So it's going to be like farms, because he makes farms, you know, and then we've got Smith, because he's a Smith. Uh, to me, that makes sense. Um, I'll try to give uh, the more important characters names, give them some cat, uh, so they, yeah, <laughs> like a better zone, they have a character, you know, instead of just being either one, two, three, and four, or whatever. But like I said, if you are still interested, just comment down in the comment section below. If you want to give one of the hivers a name, all you need to do is say what hiver and what name you want them to have. I am liking the Skinner's Roam, so we're going to do a little quick prospect. And everything seems fairly decent, just the bits I said about. Uh, might be a slight issue, but they're not a massive one, we can deal with that. And <laughs> I might have been wrong saying about there's not many enemies around. That is insane. That is a crazy, crazy amount of starving bandits. Um, it looks like a zombie horde. You know, like from like The Walking Dead or something, just coming towards you, just slowly. Uh, we would be able to fight them, but it would take forever, and we would actually take quite a fair amount of damage from it just from the fact that there's so many so the attack slots would constantly be filled and we wouldn't be able to get it, like many attacks off I mean if uh, Lydus gets an attack off and he gets like a good cleave he could take like five maybe six in one attack but I reckon there's got to be what 250 of them oh jeez it's looking like they've found some prey. I do like how they move though. It kind of looks like a, a murmuration almost when as they all go around because the squad is just so, so big. 
Yeah, those guys really didn't stand a chance. And they've also got a bunch of, uh, like, rangers with them. And those rangers just shooting in. That would be so annoying to fight because uh, the rangers can stun you. So you can just get stun locked if there's enough uh, rangers firing at you. Alternatively, they are just shooting a lot of their own. And look at the size of that doggo. Jeez. That thing is so cool. It's like super cool. Yeah, they are huge. And they're only adults as well, so they're not even like fully grown. And you know how like much, how quickly they scale from uh, okay. <laughs> might want to get out of this area. Uh, this does not seem like a, a fight I want to take. And uh, okay, we'll, we'll we'll take it because they will just chase me down otherwise and get a bunch of free damage. They don't do too much damage actually. They got quite a high attack speed, and they're super tanky. And yeah, they come up to like the waist on the Praetorian. Oh man. This kind of makes me wish I got the Tame Beasties mod in. So I think one of them, fully grown, running around with Lydus, would be super, super fun. And also terrifying. <laughs> like, did you hear the story of that uh, new group of hivers that are going around killing everyone off? Be like, yeah. And did you hear about the Orion they have with them? I heard a bit of horse in half. Or whatever the quote from Game of Thrones is about uh, Rob Stark's direwolf. Uh, it's kind of a shame having to kill them, really. Because I want them. Well, I want one. I reckon having more than one would be a bit overpowered. And... Their skin's worth a decent amount as well. What, 3,000 for a skin? That's good. That's a, that's a bunch more monies right there as well. So that's another, like, two hives when the trade uh, when the Traders Guild... No, not Traders Guild. Adventurers Guild comes in. That's the one I'm looking for. When they come in, that's uh, that'll be two more hives because the hives are, like, 5,000 a pop. And there's plenty of animals around and a path, and we found a holy farm. All right. And good resources, buy a road. I think this is where we might think about making a base camp. It might not be the final location, but right now that looks pretty spot on to me. We are going to need a little look-see, see what we are working with, and to see if there's any point going in. So, we have got... yeah? <laughs> yeah, so we've got a prince and a soldier drone right there, which is pretty good. That's already makes it worth our while going in. So we'll just have a little look around, see if I am not missing anything, because I don't want anything sneaking up on me or misjudging the situation. But I think it is what it looks like, and it's just a bunch of guards in the town. Uh, what we will do is we'll have a little look around this area, because we're going to have some uh, time to burn, so couple more resource nodes there which is pretty good we're going to wait until it's night time pretty simple because we when we go in we want the hivers in the cage firstly that stops them running away and us not being able to recruit them and secondly if we unlock their shackles uh in the day it's only about a 10 percent chance they'll join or they'll and like a 90 percent chance they'll just run away so if we can do it at night time uh, we're almost guaranteed that we are going to get the hiver to join and since as i only saw two of them i kind of don't want to take that risk so we'll wait until they're in the cages where we can almost get guaranteed recruits from them. Which, in my mind, is obviously a lot better. In the age of modern sand mod list, what we have is we have a mod called Slopeless, which means that you can change like the pitch or the tilt on the buildings. So what I was worried about in this area was the slopes being there, but the mod being called Slopeless, I guess it's kind of the idea that you can build on slopes. You know, funny that. Yeah, looks like we're going to be able to get the building somewhat straight. Even though this area is uneven, we should be fine. I might need to redo the navigation mesh a couple times, but that is something I am willing to deal with. What we're going to do is we'll have Ray on lookout, just keeping an eye on the comings and goings of the sleigh farm, and just keep an eye uh, to see if there's anything coming up and down the track, because this seems like a fairly busy track, and hopefully there are things to ambush. And talking about things to ambush, we have some holy nation traders. 
So we're going to go over, we're going to see if they're going to trade with us. Uh, hopefully make friends with them because they seem like good guys. <laughs> no, that's all a lie, it's a ruse. We're just going to go in and we're just going to hack them up and then kill the bulls and loot anything that's worth taking because, you know, they're the holy nation, it's kind of what they deserve. The more of the holy nation we can kill, the better the world will become. It is our righteous duty as hivers that once we leave this world, we leave it in a better place than what we entered. <laughs> no, I just want to kill things. And it's good practice. And those balls hopefully will have like building materials and iron plates and that sort of interesting stuff. Things that we will need to start this outpost. But at the moment the fight seems to be going quite nicely. It's just something I find like real real entertaining about just watching like Lydus and Ray just like swing their weapons and there's just a bunch of people fall down from like each hit. It's really satisfying. And you know like everyone there that's fighting them is just like absolutely bringing it. Be like, what do you mean they're not defenseless peasants? <laughs> well that's uh well, but there's an ambush there. Well like, yeah but <laughs> But we're only used to taking like women and children and torturing them. We don't know how to fight a nine foot tall Praetorian with katanas and guandos that can cleave us in half in one hit. You hold the line for Okran. <laughs> I know. How did that work out for you guys in the end? Because uh, from where I'm standing, it's not looking like it worked out very well. But now we're going into the bulls. Um, unfortunately, they don't have much of the stuff we want. They got like food, some cloth, uh, some research books and stuff. Plenty of meat. So, not a wasted ambush, but not what I was after, unfortunately. Not a massive issue. Uh, what we got was still better than what we had before, so that's fine. Hopefully, we can find some iron plates and some building materials at uh, the Holy Farm. Because it looks like it's uh, one of those like fabricating ones. So there should be some stuff. And what we'll do is we'll leave those last two Holy Nation behind so they can tell. Or, or maybe not. Maybe, maybe they just want to die. Uh, what I was going to say is <laughs> we leave them alive so they can tell their friends what happened. But turns out uh, not a chance. Alright, we've got Lydus and Ray just getting into position. Ready to launch the assault on the Holy Farm to liberate our other hivers. Check it out. Now that we have most of the guards taken down, crippled or unconscious at the moment, it will just be a mop-up exercise for any other stragglers that are hanging about. Hopefully Tychus will get into the fight or is fighting someone because that will be good practice for him. But he did get pretty dinged up in one of the fights. There we go. Just casually, casually making his way around. You know, it's cool man, we're, we're not in a fight or anything, like, don't worry. And this is why we are here. We have the hivers on the top floor. We have two soldier drones. Going to call my first one to Montford. Make sure that he is nice and big because soldier drones should be like big and scary. 
Then we have a second soldier drone and two princes. So princes are going to be real nice and simple. We're going to use them for our smithing. And there we go. A little bit scrawny at the moment. Should be like a soldier ant. Should be like bigger and scarier than, than my other hives. Not as big as my Praetorium because you can't actually make them that big. And we are going to go for two Cantino, I reckon, on this one. If I can smell it properly, I reckon that is going to be <laughs> uh, the biggest issue here. Uh, if it's smelt wrong, just uh, just let me know and I'll change it across. That's not a big deal. And then we got our two princes. First one, I'm going to call you Plate. Yeah, again, if I can smell. There we go. Fantastic. And then my second one, you are going to be Chain, I reckon. That works for me. So then I know what they're doing. Uh, I just find it easier for allocations like that if I just know they do what their name says. And then Soldier Drones, obviously, you can see what they are just by looking at them. Um, yeah, I think this is going all right. We're about to get out and... Uh, and of course, now the rest of the guards show up. Not when everyone was in the cages, not when anyone was safe, but now that we're trying to make it out. So we'll just run our new hivers out, try to keep them safe. Oh. Oh, that is a problem. We have Onis. Thankfully, they're not hostile to me and no one's knocked down. But if anyone gets knocked down around an Oni, they will kidnap them, take them into Verge and then torture them till they'll die and if there's one group of Oni there will be more of them and those guys are super hard like well tough stronger than a Praetorian in fact and they go around in massive swarms so I'm going to need to make sure I have some pretty decent gear so weapons and armor, plenty of medkits, ASAP, or my colony once it starts is just going to get picked apart and my halves are going to be taken off and tortured till they die, which Lydus doesn't particularly care about his hivers that much, but to him that's still not okay, <laughs> and, as, uh, and as for me, yeah, I am not up for that. That just doesn't sound like a fun time for anyone. So I lose my hives and then they slowly die. Eh, I mean, I don't mind them running and getting eaten by something, you know. That's their fault for not being fast enough, not being strong enough, like. But getting tortured and then just leaving them there to die. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not okay on uh, on many levels. Looks like we're going to need to rely on our hives natural speed to try and keep them alive right here. There's, a, there's always one guard. Always one guard just seems to follow your slaves out. It's not like, oh, we should take down the biggest threat and fight the Praetorians and the soldier drone and everyone that's trying to kill us. Uh, but sir, can, can I go chase down the starving slaves because I'm super brave? Just be like, shut up to me. Like, you know, just, just get on with it. <laughs> fight the Praetorians. Not my slaves. But what is cool is coming back over here, it looks like it's a bit of a uh, bit of a war zone in these parts. So what that means is there's gonna be plenty of enemies around, plenty of things trying to kill us and fight us. So we're gonna have lots of leather coming in, lots of experience for our hives. They got dinged up by the dire hyenas, but thankfully Lydus this time around is strong enough to protect and save the hives. <laughs> Compared to the first episode where the Dar Hyenas came in and basically made sure everyone died. <laughs> ah, rest in peace, Hubby Toe. Is uh, the first hive that uh, decided to follow Lydus was with him for about four hours. <laughs> gets like torn apart by a Dar Hyena and then when he's dying gets uh, eaten alive by <laughs> a processing unit. Because <laughs> Lydus is just standing there like a broken leg and missing an arm, not being able to help. And then Slavers just show up and beat Lydus up and capture him. Let's be like, I'd like to think this time around, things might go a little bit better for us. <laughs> Slight oversight on my part, I don't actually have any building materials. Uh, if we head back towards the Holy Farm, there is a shack 
um, outside, like a small shack. If we go into there, we might be able to pick up some building materials, which obviously we will need for the storm house. Uh, gonna need to make some space for that, so I'm just gonna sort out Lydas's, uh inventory, so we can store some more things so we have space. And then we'll just go across. It's not a long journey, it's literally just over the hill. I won't need to take um, the slave with me. Is that I think he's going to be safer with Ray at the moment than he is with Lydus. As Lydus is going back to the Holy Farm where he just escaped from. You can understand why going back there might not be the best of ideas. There's a guy in there, but obviously he's not really much of a threat. He's already been beaten up. And we've got an okay amount of building materials. There's a bunch of plate and leather, all chainmail and some schematics and some iron bars. Uh, that's quite good. Uh, that's going to be super useful. Uh, so we're going to be able to go back and raid that for more resources uh, as and when needed. I think that this is a good point to finish the episode. So thank you very much for watching episode 13 of Kenshi Age of Blood and Sand. I have been Konzi and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.